Right, so we've got this far now. The whole lot's bolted back together, put in the new bolts in the front, and put an extra bolt in there. The old, one of the old bolts, they're just, that they weren't in it, it's just going to strengthen things up a little bit more. We've got the lock and tab and retainer in place. It's sort of getting a nice coat of Massey Ferguson light grey. And uh, the next job will be put the radiator on uh, and wheels. And um, I'll run it for a while, uh, make sure it's all functioning well, make sure there's no water leaks. And uh, we'll bring it back down and put on the bonnet. So as I probably showed in the, uh, the first video, it's really, really tight now in the axle, exactly the way it should be. And uh, it should last a long time now. So looking forward to getting it back in one piece and to give it a quick test and make sure everything's a-okay. The radiator back on, I like to put a bit of Indian head on the radiator there, just the pipe squid, it just helps to seal them up, it means it's easy to take off again, it has to come off down the road, hopefully not for a long time. This stuff, you can see it, they use it a lot, uh, a lot in the videos, what it has been working on, gaskets and all that. Doesn't affect water, cooling system, oil, fuel system, all of that. Oh, that looks good. It's clearing the fan belts. Now, I remember I'm going to change this jubilee because I remember it was really, really stiff. And it just wasn't tightening up great, and it wasn't loosening great. So I fit a nicer one on that week, and uh, make sure it's going to seal up the hose. This is a nicer one, and I usually use a seven mil socket on those, and I find it just uh, tightens up. If you're good quality one, you can actually use the, the socket on. They're bad quality when you tighten them up with the socket. They just won't. Uh, you'll feel it skipping, and that's what was happening that one as well. And it was just a little stiff, just awkward. So. Now is the time to be doing all this. I like to put these in a way where you can get to them again, give them a nip up, or take them off again for whatever reason. bracket here as well and I think that helps locate the radiator stops it going in too far so we'll take the nut off him and we'll run him up first just to get an idea where that's meant to be and that seems to be good there so position the jubilee now might have to put on the screwdriver fitting on this. Let's start. This is a good strong one. And we can throw the coolant back in it. And the Indian head then will have to see all of it. And it's a bit of a lubricant as well, so it comes off easy, you have to take it off for whatever reason. Same with that one down there. Lovely little track of the snow. I've enjoyed working on it. It's uh, everything came off nice and easy, apart from that center pin. Excuse the camera. There's a big crack on this lens, so it's, a, it's on its last legs now. Okay. So we'll go ahead now and we'll put in the bolt coming up through here to the bracket. A little bit tight for space, but I have to replace this with a bigger bolt, I'll do that. No, nope, won't have to. That's tight enough, lovely. That's just your one in the middle, half inch. Okay. 
heat the radiator where it's meant to be. Lovely. And there's one more just in the inside of that bracket there to tighten up as well. I loosen them off so we could uh, move it out of the way when we were taking off the radiator. So we don't just have enough room in there for the socket to we'll get out of this way. I think that could be metric so we get a 13. So I'll come back when I have that tightened up. We were back in one piece by a small idea and uh, doesn't seem to be any water leaks, doesn't seem to be any oil leaks, everything's looking good. The axle now is good and solid. On it's back on. So just doing another few little tidy up jobs on it there when we're at it. I'm telling me brass off the lesh by a small day ago. I'm tired of doing a dog job before you know somebody from Cooper Kell knew what you've shot her stack. When I fit a new if if some of these that are a bit in loose gonna fit new ones in. So we'll cut the old ones out, so that's where we're at, and then we're going to bring it for a test drive. Two of these are getting fitted. One, two, and this side, and one's loose on the other side. They're, these are all put in backwards, so... The little slot in them there is meant to catch, so if it's all put in backwards, it's going to spin, and that's what's happened to some of these, so... Taking out the loose ones, fitting the ones. Entry 5 is out the gap. Feels well being tight in the steering. There's no movement in the front axle at all, as you'd expect after everything getting done. So what I'd say, just to finish off the video, I just wanted to show the differences in the pins as time went on. So this is from a Ferguson 20. This is from the gold belly here. And this was what had to be pushed out with the hydraulic press for the straight axle 1979 135, the later one. The earlier 135, I'd say, would be similar to this. So in other words, Massey Ferguson 35 and earlier 135. So, on the Gold Belly 35 here, it has a heavier front axle carrier, or cradle, I think they call it as well. It's cast, and it's a lot thicker here where it goes in. Where it's the cross beam's the same as the 20, and it's thicker on the far side. So I had to cut that pin in three, in two places to get it out, basically. And I suppose the fact I had to do that it was probably the tractor's way of telling me it didn't need to be replaced. If it was wobbling around, yeah, that's when you replace it. This came from the Ferguson 20 over here. It's the second one I've done on the Ferguson. Uh, very easy to remove because the front axle cross beam carrier is only pressed steel. So I also drilled and put in a, a grease nipple in there. And... Uh, that was easy to do. You can see here just a little thin lip of uh, the cradle there in the front, and then behind it, then it's a little bit, a little bit wider. You can just see it there under the radiator. So um, yeah, I said I'd show the three of them just for comparison, since I have them here. These are my three trophies. We'll call them from doing the jobs. So yeah, the problem with these is your grub screw fits in there. And it means that this doesn't turn with the cross beam, it stays, it stays uh, stationary, it doesn't move, so rust can build up. Whereas these, the cross beam rubs, you can see the, the mark on them there. You can probably see a bit of wear on this as well, it's a, yeah. So because of all the years of rubbing that, it does get worn, so it means it's easier to, to remove. So that's it. Uh, the owner's happy and... Uh, yeah, we'll wait and see what the next project is to come through them doors. But it runs all in. Slán, go full. August, uh, get and sure luck will catch you at the next video.